Hey guys, I'm Lauren Edwards and I'm going to talk to you about omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are an essential fatty acid, meaning that they cannot be produced by the body and must be consumed through food intake or supplementation, and are part of a classification of polyunsaturated fatty acids. The three main omega-3s are EPA and DHA, and alpha-linolytic acid, or ALA, which is the most common omega-3 present in the Western diet because it's derived from vegetable sources. The body typically uses ALA for energy, although it has the ability to partially convert it to EPA and DHA. However, the quantity converted is usually insufficient, creating a need for intake through dietary sources or supplementation. This is why omega-3 supplements are usually in the form of fish, krill, or other marine-derived oils, because they have the highest concentrations of EPA and DHA that our bodies need. Omega-3 fatty acid supplements are typically made from the fish oil extracted from the carcasses of fatty, oily fish, such as tuna or salmon, which is then refined, purified, and concentrated. These fish do not produce omega-3 fats on their own, but accumulate them by consuming microalgae or eating other fish that do. To get omega-3s from food sources, make sure to include fatty fish, vegetable oils, nuts like walnuts, flaxseed, leafy green vegetables, and animal fats from grass-fed or pastured animals into your diet on a regular basis. If you choose to supplement, omega-3 fish oils are taken by mouth in either liquid form or capsule form. Once ingested and after being hydrolyzed by pancreatic enzymes, the fatty acids are absorbed in the small intestine and are then distributed by lipoproteins, the same carriers that transport cholesterol through the body via the bloodstream, which then deliver the omega-3s to target organs or tissues. While the mechanisms of omega-3 fatty acids are not very well understood, one study confirmed that GPR-120 functions as a receptor, causing an anti-inflammatory and insulin-sensitizing effect in the body. As for the metabolism of omega-3 fatty acids, they're handled differently by the body than a drug because of their nature as a triglyceride. So the half-life is measured by a conversion of ALA to EPA and DHA, and the presence of each within the body over time. One supplement company cited a private study that found that ALA in blood plasma was quite low after an hour. In comparison, the half-life of EPA was 67 hours and that of DHA about 20 hours. They then may be stored in adipose tissues, waiting to be used before excretion. The reasons to supplement omega-3s are countless. Due to the poor nutrition of majority of factory farmed animals raised for meat production in the United States and their lack of access to pastures, the resulting meats are very low in the omega-3s that would otherwise be available to us as consumers. Because of this, most Americans are deficient in omega-3s and usually have an overabundance of omega-6s. This is significant because omega-3s are recognized to reduce inflammation, while omega-6s tend to promote inflammation, which can lead to negative effects on health. Omega-3 fatty acids are vital to our health because they are an integral part of cell membranes throughout the body. They also provide the starting point for making hormones that regulate blood clotting, contraction and relaxation of arterial walls, and inflammation. This essential fatty acid has been claimed to do everything per from preventing heart disease and stroke, controlling inflammatory autoimmune conditions such as lupus, eczema, and rheumatoid arthritis, playing a productive role in cancer, reducing risk of eye-related conditions such as macular degeneration, supporting cognitive function, and decreasing symptoms of depression and ADHD. There has also been a great deal of hype about its use in shortening the effects of delayed onset muscle soreness and quickening the recovery process after high-intensity workouts. There are so many great claims out there about omega-3s, but I wanted to know if the claims of its ability to reduce inflammation in muscles and joints, especially after exercise, held any water. A review of various studies by Wall and his colleagues claims that increasing the amount of omega-3s in the diet changes the production of important mediators and regulators of inflammation and immune responses towards an anti-inflammatory profile. Another review by Simopoulos states that changes and improvements in the background diet and an additional 1 to 2 grams per day of EPA and DHA should, provide, uh, should prevent the inflammation in muscles and joints, making omega-3 fatty acids essential for the overall health of the athlete. A study by Lemke and fellow researchers looked at the effect of omega-3 supplementation for college athletes on delayed onset muscle soreness after heavy eccentric exercise, with results indicating that supplementation decreased the incidence of delayed onset muscle soreness in the subjects. 
One final study from Atashak and colleagues studied the effect of supplementing after acute resistance exercise in young athletes. They found that strenuous exercise does indeed induce oxidative stress and can increase pro-inflammatory markers. However, after a short week-long supplementation of omega-3 fatty acids prior to strenuous exercise, they found that oxidative stress was reduced, myocellular damage decreased, and overall inflammation levels were minimized. Overall, current studies support the recent claims that supplementing omega-3 fatty acids helps to reduce inflammation and tissue damage and decrease the symptoms of delayed onset muscle soreness that usually follow bouts of high-intensity exercise, meaning that supplementing omega-3s can be helpful to both athletes and the average person who exercises regularly. As for dosage, the National Institute of Health states that omega-3 fish oil supplements are likely safe for most people, although more than 3 grams a, daily, a day might keep blood from clotting and can increase the chance of bleeding, thus making it possibly unsafe. The average recommendation is 1-4 to four grams per day taken by mouth, depending on the individual and their reason for taking the supplement. Talk to your doctor before taking omega-3 fatty acids just to avoid any adverse effects. Omega-3 fatty acids act as a blood thinner and should be used cautiously by people who bruise easily or have a bleeding disorder, as well as for those who are scheduled for surgery in the near future. People with type 2 diabetes may experience increases in fasting blood sugar levels while taking the supplement and should definitely consult a doctor first. Because omega-3 supplements are currently unregulated by the FDA, the purity and consistency of the product cannot be guaranteed, leaving it up to the consumer to research available brands to find one that is free of mercury and other contaminants. While omega-3s are vital to fetal development and are usually safe to take, pregnant or nursing women should still consult a doctor before supplementing. Beyond this, side effects of taking fish oils include gas, bloating, unpleasant belching, and diarrhea. Those taking blood thinners such as anti- coagulants and on antiplatelets, diabetes medication, cyclosporine, topical steroids, cholesterol-lowering medication, birth control, high blood pressure medication, or any form of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories should consult their doctor before taking omega-3 fatty acid supplements, as all of these could have the potential for adverse interactions and side effects. As for claims by professional or government organizations, the FDA made a public statement in 2004 that foods and supplements containing the EPA and DHA fatty acids reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. However, most recently in 2012, the American Medical Association released a meta-analysis concluding that there was no effect on, of the supplement on cardiovascular events, which is why most people choose to take the supplement. As for sports and performance regulation organizations such as WADA and the NCAA, there seems to be no mention of or restriction for the use of omega-3 fatty acids. There's a lot of interesting things going around about omega-3s right now, but if you're an active individual, the research is in your favor to have supplementation, support your body's recovery, and reduce inflammation. I hope this video was helpful in answering some questions. Stay well!